What's up, guys? Shane here. Um, got a knife review for y'all. I know I haven't done one of these in a while. Um, kind of want to take a moment to explain that. Um, guys, I never set to s out to to be a channel where I sell you guys anything or ask for anything. And I started kind of feeling like that's what I was doing. And I, I don't want to do that anymore. So you, you're going to see less reviews from me. You may see some silly random videos that have nothing to do with knives. But um, the only time you're going to see me do a knife review is when I've checked out something and, and I just have an honest opinion on it. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not going to check out stuff that I just absolutely hate and bash it. If you've got something that you're dissatisfied with, you want to check, want me to check it out, send it to me. I'll check it out. I'll do a video. But the issue is I'm not going to ask a distributor for something that I, I don't have some interest in. To be honest, I didn't have a whole lot of interest in this until I got it. Um, as you can see, this is the Benchmade Claymore. So it coming in a black box means that it's Benchmade's tactical division, I guess you could say. Um, so let's get into it. Let's see what we've got here. Comes in your standard, like I said, Benchmade black box and the little baggie. Um, it's a nice enough presentation. Uh, you know, some people are of the opinion that Benchmade's got too big for their britches and their prices are getting too high. I want to talk about that a little bit first, guys. Um, I don't I don't think that's necessarily the case. Um, their prices are too high for you. Uh, and that, that includes me. Um, I don't have a whole lot of money. I can't afford a whole lot of their products. Um, that just means that that particular knife or model is not made for me. So I don't have to... I don't have to worry about, you know, trying to come up with the money to get it, you know, because some knife reviewer said it was cool and, you know, for fear of missing out, I don't have to buy it. So, yeah. Um, I just don't believe you should ever tell a man his product's not worth something. If, if, if it's not worth it to you, just don't buy it, you know, simple enough. But I want to go over why I have some interest in this knife. And this right here is what led me to want to look at it and the reason why I'm making this video. This is my Protec TR4. Sitting these beside each other, there's zero doubt this is the cooler of the two knives. Price-wise, I don't think they're that much different. Um, you know, this does come with a uh, CPM D2 blade. Some people don't like that. Like I said, once again, this is a tactical self-defense tool. Something like that to me. Um, it can be EDC'd. I don't carry this with the plans of doing a whole lot of cutting. Um, does it hold up to the amount of cutting that I would do? Absolutely. Um, I don't have an issue with D2 or, or CPM D2 at all. So the reason why I wanted to talk about these two and why I think this could have a place in my EDC Um even sometimes over this, and I'll get to why. The things that I like about the Claymore. First of all, Benchmade did away with the Axis Lock um, auto actuator. Um, I hated it, um, and that's not hating on Benchmade. It just didn't work for me. The reason why it didn't work for me is because I use my thumb to hold this side of the knife. So if, if I have to remove my thumb from holding this side of the knife, to mess with that access law, I don't feel like I've got a good grip on the knife. Guys, that may just completely be something personal with me. Um, you know, may, may not apply to you, but it's the reason why I never cared for the access lock style autos. Um, this just does have a button, um, fires nice and hard. Now, the difference in the firing mechanism between it and the Protec, I feel like the Protec fires. A little harder however i don't think either one of them are necessary i don't think it has to fire that hard um sometimes i feel like protex a little bit a little bit over the top with that um once again that may be completely due to you know my nerve issue nerve damage issues in my hands um you know at one point in time i had one of these and, and gave it away because I, I was scared I couldn't control it. Um, that's not Protex's fault. would be Benchmade's fault. 
However, this does fire a little bit harder. The reason why I kind of like this knife, though, and I'm not going to say I like it more than my TR4 because, as you can see, I've had it customized. It's got, you know, some laser wear, Ver uh, Veritas Equitus on it, and it's got the Boondock Saints Celtic Knotwork Cross. Um, big Boondock Saint fan, so that meant something to me when I had it done. Still does. Love this knife. Um, however... Weight-wise, this is significantly a heavier knife than this. Um, by a good bit. This this is quite a bit heavier. Um, I would also say this is probably quite a bit heavier duty. However, the uh, you know the blade stock on it's not super thick, but as you can see by the plunge grind, which I think is a huge mistake a lot of us make, we don't pay enough attention to the plunge grind on knives. Um, I talked about it before when I covered the fact that the American Blade Works is slashier than the TRM Atom. Nobody believed me. I love the TRM Atom, guys. But it, that's just the truth. And you can tell about that, that by looking at the plunge grind. This plunge is so shallow because there's not a whole lot of material removed. Much like on the Atom, they don't move as much material, material. Therefore, the American Blade Works is thinner behind the edge, has better cutting geometry. This has significantly better cutting geometry than this. As I don't own mics, I've, I've got friends that do. If I'm that curious about something, I can take it to them. But um, I can just tell you that this slice is better than this. So uh, let's take a look at this blade steel, what it's coming with here. If I can get it to focus in. Look there. It's also CPMD2. So... You know, I would like to say they're probably even there. I don't know that much about the heat treats between ProTech and Benchmade. I know the Benchmade D2 that I've experienced in the past was some of the best I've ever experienced. I can't say that with all their steels, but um, yeah, this just cuts a little better. It's a whole lot lighter. Um, it's easier on my hands as far as deployment. I just, uh, may, you know, maybe it has something to do with the texturing or just a slightly skinnier scales. I do feel like I have much better control of this. I don't ever feel like it's going to fly out of my hands or I'm going to drop it, even though it does fire very hard. Um, but like I said, guys, I think about an auto, uh, automatic knife as, as a self-defense tactical style knife. Um, and I think this still qualifies for that. But I, th I do feel like it, uh, it has a little more crossover into EDC. Um, you know, it just like the ProTech, it does have a lock so that once you open it, you can't, can't shut it without disengaging the lock and you can also lock it shut so that, uh, you know, no worries of it coming open in your pocket. I don't know anybody that's ever happened to, um, both of these take a very, uh, purposeful press on the button to get them to open. So I don't know if it's completely necessary, but, um, I will tell you one thing. That I have discovered in the past with uh, Benchmade and their warranty. Protex warranty is, is 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 great. I can't really rate which one's better between the Benchmade and the Protex simply because I haven't had to have any warranty work done from either. I have a Protex that I have a. I don't know if it's an issue or if it's just something that I don't like the way they did it. I talked to um, I can't remember his name, bald headed guy that. Is the big wig at ProTech. I talked to him at Blade Show. He said, he, you know, they'd be glad to take a look at it. But um, so they seem very helpful. Um, I know Benchmade's warranty has always been great unless you snap the blade. And, you know, they charge you for the blade. Some people complain about that. But guys, if you break the blade on a knife, you're either doing something with it it wasn't meant for or uh, you're using it in a desperate self-defense situation. And at that point, you shouldn't care if the blades broke because you're probably never going to get it back uh like i said price wise you know these are pretty close material wise they're close um you know i guess you could you could give the upper hand to the aluminum scales on this versus this but um i don't care either way uh you know i couldn't have this laser engraved and it looked cool like this so maybe this is a plus weight wise i'll give it to the claymore um as far as the action um, on an automatic, all you can really rate is how hard it fires. Protect fires a little harder. However, I feel like both of them fire harder than they need to. 
Um, I, I might change my mind about that somewhere down the road. If, you know, if it got really dirty and you know, it needed all that extra spring to fire it, but I don't know. Um, yeah. So like I said, the only reason why I was interested in this knife is because as much as I love this, if I owned this, I would probably carry it more than this. And that's just the truth. Um, for all you bench made haters, yeah, you know, sorry. That's just my opinion on that. Um, I'd love to give a big shout out to these guys, Blade Ops. They were kind enough to loan me this. I'm going to get this back in the mail to them. Um, guys, I don't hear people talking about Blade Ops very often. I don't think they're as popular in, in our little community, you know, for a place to purchase a knife, but uh, they are good people. And the reason I say that is because I've borrowed some stuff from them that I hated. And, you know, I, I contacted Andy, my, my contact at, at Blade Ops. I was like, Andy, I don't know what to do, man. I don't know if I should do this review because I don't like the knife. And he was like, Shane, you, you do your review and you be completely honest. I don't care how bad it is. If it's your truth, you do the review. So um, I have a lot of respect for Blade Ops for that. And, uh, you know, like I said, they've been good to me. So, you know, they're the only company that I shill for, if you want to say that. But, uh, yeah, if you're looking for an out side auto, um, you know, if you just like this better, then, hey, go for it. If you want to buy some, you know, a Chinese Boker, I promise you it's not even close to the quality of these. But do what you got to do. But um, I do feel like this is more of an EDC auto than this is. I, I feel like this feels, slightly feels more rolls than this does. So that's all I got for you guys today. Man, I really appreciate y'all spending any time with me. Peace. Love y'all.